we're driving to a spot we're passing an old retired military airstrip and i thought it'd be really cool to come and drive out onto it just a little piece of history here <laughs> military aviation history but yeah <laughs> And now for an impromptu lunch on an airstrip. Never done that before. Cheers. So after some consideration, we've just decided to stay here. It's kind of unique. Never slept on an abandoned airfield before. I don't know if we're on the right place or not. <laughs> giddy like a little schoolboy that is so freaking cool oh man would it be like to fly one of those things that was a cool experience <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that stopped really fast <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, just try, just try, come on. <laughs> no. Yes. This has been the craziest, like, 10 minutes of our, our entire trip, I think. The full moon is coming up right over there with a sunset right behind us, and there's been ospreys landing just 100 feet from us. Not the bird. Not the bird. The aircraft. The aircraft. <laughs> and I think I may have said pelican earlier, but that's a halo reference that's just kind of showing my nerd side. Um, but yeah, this has been absolutely crazy and just one of those like wild experience that you have when you're on the road. So we're just loving this moment. Well, our friends finally found us. Oh freaking time! I missed the whole show. I can't believe it. Gerardo! <laughs> She's not happy to see you guys. Oh Greta! Hi! Hello! <laughs> Hello! Oh my god! Hi! Hi! Hi. <laughs> Oh, good girl. <laughs> oh, my God. Is there one? That's not so 
bad. We took our battery down to 13%. Okay. So. Oh. Oh, you're such a good girl. Okay, take. Oh, you got it. We're drinking out of glass jars now because when we were driving yesterday, we hit a pothole so big that it smashed open our uh, closet door and my mug fell out and shattered on the floor. <laughs> that ain't hashtag van life. I don't know what is. <laughs> You're more like, oh, this milk is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, being wide. Bean water. <laughs> oh, oh, Greta, hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hi, girl. Hello. Hi, girl. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> branch manager. <laughs> nice. You guys ready to go to Mexico? Oh, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Don't seem so excited about it. Give <laughs> him coffee. Yeah. 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 Oh god. Don't hurt yourself before going to the <laughs> And now I'm done. And now I'm done. I got my yayos out. Uh, Skateboard extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to Mexico now? We're going to Mexico. Yes. We're going to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Mexico. What you doing, Alex? Oh, just filling up the last of expensive American gas. <laughs> Listen to this really catchy music. Well, we've done it. Made it. Ew. Come in, Brian and Christina. Earth to Brian and Christina. <laughs> Ready to rock and roll? Right, well, we've done it. Uh, we've made it through the Mexican border. Um, there's some things to tell you guys that we did not know that will definitely help some other travelers. Let's just get after it and get out of here. Time to do some currency exchange. Whatever. <laughs> Shush. I just said, thank you very much. Good morning. Just it's a good day, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do it. Where, where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, we're going to San Felipe, I think. I'm rich. Oh my goodness. How did you get so rich? 6,000 pesos. <laughs> the wall. Maybe we can find an eye top in there. Oh. Four 
stuck here in the military checkpoint line. It's not moving very fast. At least we've got gummy bears. Ah. That's cute. They got little tire tanks. Auto espera su turno. We made it through the military checkpoint. Didn't film, obviously, but it's kind of a funny experience. Um, the guy came around to the side after asking to see inside the van. And, um, you know, he first asked me, do you have any guns? And, no. And then he looks at me and like, you got any drugs? I'm like, no. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> he just smiled and let us go through. It was funny. Pretty nice. I think we can, but this for a moment before going through that checkpoint. Yeah. Like, where are you from? Or where did you come from? Mm -hmm. They done baby this. And I was like prepared for that when we rolled up through window and that was not the question I got. <laughs> and I was like, Christina. <laughs> hey help. <laughs> <laughs> happens to me every time. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the day was spent at a spot on the bluff overlooking the small cove. Having spent the better portion of the last few days getting organized in preparation for two months in Baja, we all found ourselves in need of some downtime. Sitting there on the coast of Mexico with the U.S. border only a couple of hours north of us, it felt like we were in a different world, not just a different country. It was easily 10 degrees warmer, the air more fragrant, the landscape more exotic. It was the start of this new chapter of our adventures. We were soaring sky high. The next day, we woke to a spectacular sunrise, rich in color, the sun carrying its warmth to our little home on the bluff. It was as though Mexico was welcoming us in. Greta. As the sun climbed in the sky, we decided to depart from our little sliver of this new paradise in search of another. However, before our search would continue, a pressing matter needed to be attended to. Tacos. Alex is constantly on the hunt for authentic Mexican tacos while we're in North America. And now that we're in Baja, he needn't search in vain any longer. Tacos. Delicious tacos. With our bellies full and our spirits high, we pressed on south. Not long after leaving San Felipe, we were on a dirt track, airing down and driving full steam towards the soft sand on the sprawling beach ahead. Oh yeah, this glass real. So now we have aired down to the lowest PSI we've ever been in Betty. And we're riding like a big old limo, super squishy. <laughs> it's wonderful. And uh, we're gonna go find some sand. The, the auto park. Betty is, as you all well know by now, a two-wheel drive van. The fruit and the plants are really what I'm here to film. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In our research prior to entering Baja, we have come across countless stories of people in vans getting stuck in the sand. So you can only imagine my apprehensions were quite high. Alex, on the other hand, didn't seem to share the same sentiment. Oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you guys figure out where you want to park and how you want to park, and then I'm just going to rally in, okay? <laughs> Our friend Brian of Dirt Trails Wanted was also pretty keen to explore the capabilities of their truck Dolores in the deep sand before bumping off to find our camp spot for the night. Yeah, it's great. Better. Alex refuses to tell anyone what PSI he drops the tires to. He claims it's a totally arbitrary number. But whatever PSI he dropped the tires to in this case seemed to have Betty floating over the sand, her powerful 4.8 liter V8 charging her across the beach to her camp spot for the night. So in true Baja form, Got day time. Hey guys, so we just made it to our camp spot here just south of San Felipe. Now has come the time to tell you guys uh, about what happened at the border. I mentioned earlier that something happened at the border that we weren't expecting. Our border crossing went fairly smoothly. Uh, however, the agent at the border, he actually searched our van far more thoroughly than my previous crossover into Baja, which I was a little bit surprised by. We had uh, our parts that we just purchased for Betty in the United States. We had them sitting right in the center of our floor because we couldn't really put them anywhere else. And while he was searching our vehicle, he saw that they were auto parts and asked if we had a receipt. And I presented the receipt. Our, rec our receipt was for $1,400. $50.68. When he saw that, he said, you have to pay taxes. We never even for a second thought that we'd have to pay duty on something. Wow. Well, <laughs> that was silly of us to not think about that, seeing as we're Canadian and we cross from the States to Canada often enough to know about duty. We had the parts in the boxes because we thought, oh, we should keep them in the boxes in case we need to return anything. And we failed to remember that taking a big sum of money in auto parts or anything for that matter, you'll have to pay tax on it. Going from the States to Canada, I think it's what, 12% or something like that? Yeah, it's 12, 13%. Basically, if you're crossing into BC, it's a combined total of both the GST and PST that you have to pay. Now, going into Mexico, it was 19%. How cheap. Yeah. So, <laughs> I have the receipt here. So, we paid a total of 5,041 pesos in tax on our $1,400 purchase of auto parts. That amounts to about $350 Canadian. I'll put the actual conversion right here. So, that was kind of a hard hit. We paid. We already paid $1,450. USD, which amounts to about $1,900 Canadian. And then on top of that, we paid another $300. Now with this experience out of the way, we're a little bit smarter. We're hoping that what we save in labor, getting the parts installed at a shop here in San Felipe, it'll kind of equal out to what we would have paid in Canada. It's unfortunate we were hoping to save a little bit more because we are traveling on savings right now. But, um, you kind of learn as you go and you can't always account for these kind of things. So what we're going to say next uh, just comes with a disclaimer. We by no means condone uh, not paying duty. However, if you intend to have your vehicle repaired in Mexico um, and you buy parts in the United States, which it was suggested to us to do because the supply line in Mexico is not as robust robust as in the United States so if you're gonna do that maybe lose the receipt <laughs> and just throw your parts in with the rest of your spare parts what we would have done differently is declare part of our bill all the big stuff that obviously couldn't be hidden because our vans packed full and they're big big hunks of steel. We did buy like a whole bunch of small stuff that we could have unboxed and just popped into our tool chest, which, you know, 
he didn't really care to look through every item in the tools. A word of wisdom from those uh, more experienced. <laughs> I hope this helps someone uh, in the future. It was going to be big install, but <laughs> once we get it done, Betty should be good to go and a heck of a lot less loud. Not that she didn't make it onto the soft sand here. Yeah, she did good. Knock on wood. There's no <laughs> wood around on, here. Knock on sheet metal. <laughs> I had a lot of people uh, on the internet yelling at me saying, you're going to drive down the Baja Peninsula with a vehicle that needs considerable repair? You're crazy. <laughs> and Turns out we'll never not be driving a vehicle that needs lots of repairs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here we go. Instagram, uh, Josh and Vanessa of Destined to Wild join us last night and I think they're going to hang with us for a little while before heading on down to Argentina. We spent the next day on the beach. The time was passed doing Baja beach things, soaking in the sun, swimming, and eating tacos. Well, it's 18 degrees Celsius. The sun is out. The water's most likely warm. Ish. So I guess it's time for a swim. What you making, baby? Lunch tacos. Delicious lunch tacos. Oh, most excellent. We had a chance to get to know Josh and Vanessa a little better. Unfortunately, they would only spend a day with us before continuing on to a location further down the peninsula. Alex had been complaining about his overgrown hair for weeks, and it just so happened that Josh was a barber. In the event that your foreign country beach experience isn't feeling unique enough, just add in an impromptu haircut from a Canadian barber whose hometown is only a few hours from yours. <laughs> 